Okay, uh, so my name is Alexei. I work at Lyft as lead Android engineer. I've been with the company for almost four years now, and originally I was the first Android engineer on the team. So it's a little bit more than a year ago we decided to completely re-architect our app, which previously heavily relied on the Android fragments, and we switch over to using plain on Android views as a new building block. So today I'm gonna reveal the details of this exciting journey. And uh, before I start, I actually wanna know how many of you still use fragments in their Android apps. Okay, uh, and uh, how many of you are happy with the way fragments works? <laughs> okay, looks, looks like I'm not the only person who was frustrated with fragments. Okay, so I divided my talk into four primary parts. First, I'm gonna talk about the problems that uh, Lyft had with fragments before. Then I will cover some advantages of using plain Android views over fragments. Then we will see how you can build view-only apps using the Scoop framework that we released two months ago publicly. And then I will cover some best practices we learned during this migration process uh, during the last two years. Cool, so let's start with a little bit of history. Uh, so since the early days, Lyft was a single activity app, and the reason for it was the, uh, it is, is inside our view hierarchy. Uh, do you see actually the anime? Okay, uh, wait, okay, good. <laughs> So in the top of our view hierarchy, you can uh, see the sliding menu. Uh, I wonder, what, do you see the animations? No? Oh, now you see? Okay, good. Um, so while the sliding animation is go back and forward, uh, the, it, it should stay there while you're changing the screen. And if we will go forward, uh, we have map transitions. Is it plain? Okay. Uh, a lot of our screens are based on map, and while you're switching between various map screens, uh, you only have to switch the UI, and the map should stay there, because if you will try to reinstantiate the map, if you will use the different activities, it will be noticeable for users, and will be definitely a bad experience. So back in 2012, the new coolest thing that was uh, released were fragments. And by its definition, it's something that allows you to decompose your UI to reusable components that uh, inside a single activity. So without any doubt, doubt, I decided, oh, this is the thing that I have to use. And uh, I start digging myself to that rabbit hole. Uh, but after a while and very extensive usage of fragments, especially child fragments, I realized that it come with certain costs. So the first problem I encountered was a complicated life cycle. And the biggest issue is that whenever you make a mistake, you don't actually see it immediately. You see it in production when your apps start crashing and users start reporting certain issues or you see them in crash lytics or bug snack. And when we start growing our team, people will keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. And there was no easy way how we can educate everybody how to properly use fragments in all the possible cases. Another issue that I called Schrodinger fragment was caused by a synchronous nature of fragment transaction. So whenever you commit something to fragment manager, the reference to that fragment is not immediately accessible. So for a while, your fragment is living in this limbo when you don't know if it's there or not. And before we, we discovered that, we had some race conditions uh, in our, especially in our right state changes when we were trying to access the fragment and it was now, but in fact it was there. So as a result, we start tracking fragment instances separately, but it kinda don't make sense. The fragment manager tracked the instances, but in the same time, you have to track all of them by yourself. 
Uh, and another very frequent, uh, pretty easy mistake that a lot of people make uh, is illustrated on this code sample. Maybe some of you know what is wrong with this. Any, any volunteers to uh, answer? Okay. Uh, so with fragments, you should never use, never create a custom constructor because whenever you will try to restore your fragment, the Android system can only access the default constructor and if I have something like this, the whole thing will blow up. Uh, so overall, <laughs> Everything was possible, but really, really painful. And I mean, after struggling with fragments for a while, we decided we need some alternative. So we started our search. Uh, and after a while, we get to the idea that the solution was there from the beginning. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you can just use plain Android use. That was there since the day one. So what are advantages of using uh, views of the fragments? So views have a much simpler life cycle. All you care about if view is attached to window and if view is detached from window. And more than that, you have full control over instantiation process. So you inflate the view and immediately add it to the view hierarchy. No asynchronous magic of fragment transactions, all in, all in your hands. Oh, wait. Uh, but the only missing part is navigation and backstack. Um, so we decided to provide a solution that uh, covered this missing part. And as a result, we created a micro framework called Scoop uh, that provides navigation capabilities for views and some extra features on the top of that. So let's see how it works. Uh, to navigate between application screen, you create a special screen object that contains uh, metadata necessarily, necessary to decide what needs to be rendered. That screen get passed to the router. Router put it into the back stack, emit the route change event, and then special UI container class decide what needs to be rendered and what UI transitions need to be performed. And probably the very important part about UI container is that actually whenever you switch from one screen to another, we dispose the old screen. And this, this difference uh, allows us to have only two lifecycle methods because we no longer need to have lifecycle methods for create, re uh, stop, and like cre create, uh, start, stop, and destroy. All we need is just two lifecycle methods. Now let's take a deeper look at the routing. So on this slide, I have a sample screen object that allows us to pass a param to the other screen and also have a controller annotation that actually define what needs to be rendered. I will talk about controller a little bit later. So now just consider that it's used to make a decision for rendering. So here I use the, the basic navigation method go to that take your screen, renders it, and put it on the top of the back stack. So in total, we support five primary navigation methods, uh, and it covers all the scenarios that we need at Lyft. Hopefully, it covers your potential scenarios too. Uh, for more details, you can actually look at the docs and the samples, because it's, I mean, it's not really fun to talk about various backstack methods. Okay, so I actually lied a little bit. We're not using plain Android views. Uh, we used them originally, but then we introduced a special object that we called view controller. Uh, so, but the view controller is in fact directly coupled with view lifecycle, but it provides some workarounds for issues I will talk a little bit later. So typical view controllers uh, uh, allow you to specify which layout need to be rendered, have two lifecycle methods, attach and detach, uh, and also automatically bound it with the subviews through button knife. 
and you don't even need to call button knife bind. We call it for you. So all you need to, is to start declaring your injection and like click bindings, et, et cetera. If you don't use button knife, it's okay. You just have to use the get view method and try to access subviews from there. So why we introduce view controller? Uh, so there, there are few, there are actually two primary limitations we, we faced. The first is that whenever you need some common functionality between your views, um, the, the, you, you can't use inheritance because in a lot of cases, views are inherited from different view groups. So some views could be inherited from frame layout, some from linear layout, some from scroll view. Uh, and you definitely can live without it, use composition of inheritance, and it's good. But in some, uh, especially like easy cases, it's so annoying that inheritance is not something you can use in your arsenal. Another problem is Android preview. Uh, as you know, if you create a custom view and it has any non-trivial logic there, it will crash in Android preview if you didn't specifically use if statement that check if the view is in edit mode or not. And I mean, unfortunately, all people are lazy, nobody using edit mode, and at some point, all the uh, preview in Lyft looked like this. So something just crashed because, uh, yeah, the preview can't execute that. Uh, now we actually came to the point why we called framework scoop. So if you imagine that your application is an ice cream and each scoop of the ice cream is some sort of dependency scope, uh, we can see that the bottom of our ice cream will be application scope. This scope contains dependencies that should live while the entire application is alive. So it could be JSON or KHTP client and stuff like that. So on the top of that, you have activity scope with the object that need to survive while activity is alive. And on the top of that, we introduce a scopes that will live while your screens are in the back stack. So imagine if you go to home screen and create certain dependency. That screen will be alive when you will go to profile screen and uh, your screen will be still there. Um, so out of the box, we provide an integration with Dagger 1, but a scoop that don't directly depend on specific version of Dagger. So if somebody wants, they can implement a Dagger 2 integration. That's just not something we use at the moment. Uh, and on, on this particular sample, I have a screen uh, that has a associated Dagger module where I uh, provide presenter and some session object. So this is a typical use of the uh, depend for the dependencies of the screen scopes. Uh, I will talk about presenter later. So now let's take a look uh, how you can use it for a temporary session. So let's imagine that you have uh, a profile edit scenario and your profile edit could consist from several steps. Like I want to edit my music that I like and I also want to edit my hometown. But to edit the hometown, I have to go to separate screen. So let's see the animation. It's unfortunate I can't see it, but the thing is when I modified the music I like, uh, this information is preserved when I go to the other screen. But if the session is over, uh, this whole object is destroyed, so whenever I will go to the edit profile again, uh, uh, the, the information will be read uh, from the initial state. So the last topic related to the basic of scoops is uh, transition support. Uh, so if you wanna play animation from one screen, uh, when you go from one screen to another, you have to use a special annotation called 
enter transition and exit transition on the, your screen object. Out of the box, we support several uh, uh, built-in transition, and you always can implement your own. So is the animation plain? Okay, so here you can see that when I go to PayPal, I play slide up and down. When I go to Android Pay, I play slide from left to right animation, and for add credit card, I use fade in, fade out animation. Cool, so that's it about basics. Uh, about two months ago, I gave the same talk uh, in Seattle Android Happy Hour, and there was a lot of questions uh, uh, about certain use cases. So I decided to base my best practices session using those questions. So the first question was, okay, was how you integrate a third party libraries that depends on activity? Then what if I need to use activity lifecycle in my view controllers? Uh, is it possible to integrate Google Map? Well, <laughs> obviously it is possible since our app is so heavily dependent on Google Maps. Uh, and uh, I don't know why, but the, mo the very popular question was, can I use MVP pattern? Well, yes, you can, and I'll show how to do it. So in Lyft, we actually depend on a lot of third-party SDKs. Uh, not something we want, but something we have to deal with. Uh, and to provide a very clean and uh, like and decoupled solution for that, we introduced a special interface that we called Activity Service. So Activity Service allow you to hook to uh, application create and all activity life cycles. So don't mix it up with Android services. It has nothing in common with that. We just we're just a big fans of domain-driven design concept, and uh, the service have slightly different uh, uh, meaning in, in that concept. Uh, so when we defined this interface, we also defined a registry. So the registry will be the only class that get called when, activity, when application starts or activity lifecycle methods are called. So you put all your integrations to the registry, and then registry plays these callbacks for every integration. So your integration won't pollute your lift, your application and your main activity. And it's very important because when you have a single activity app, you have to keep your activity code very clean and only devoted for framework related stuff. Because if you will stop uh, putting any feature related logic to your main activity, soon it will become a, a God class that nobody can read. So let's see how you can, for example, integrate a card I.O. for scanning a car. So all you need to do is to hook to activity result. Then inside activity result, you parse the response. And we, we, what we usually do, we put it into the behavior subject that could be exposed as observable method for the uh, users of this service. And the beauty here is that the interface of card scanning service don't have any dependencies on Android code. So whenever you're trying to use it, uh, you can always fake it out easily without using RoboElectric or any other uh, code that depends on Android. Another Typical scenario is that you have to sometimes hook to uh, activity lifecycle. And the primary thing uh, you need to hook to is usually resume and pause methods. Um, for example, on our set pickup screen, we have to hook to the resume and pause to start and stop the pulling of nearby drivers. Because while on your, you are on the set pickup screen, you have to continuously refresh the drivers nearby you. But if you pause the app, you have to stop it. And the biggest dif difference from the view life cycle is that when you stop the app by just pausing it, it's not actually detach the view. Uh, so the view is still attached, and if we will use view detach, 
we won't stop the pooling. And that will be bad because we will keep doing network calls while the app is inactive. So to work around this, we created a foreground detector that is actually an implementation of activity service interface. So it hooks to activity resume and pause, then save the current state of the activity to behavior subject and expose it to the view controllers that need to use it. So in this case, when my view controller is attached, I can observe the foreground event and start and stop my pooling service. Cool. Okay, what about Google Map? Uh, so, well, we definitely don't use Google Map Fragment. We use uh, Google Map View. Uh, and uh, we, we actually have Map View that is always behind the user interface. So whenever you switch from one screen to another, we just swap everything on the top of the map. And the map is always the same. To provide an easy access for all our view controllers, we introduce a class called Map Manager. Well, that's a very simplified version of it. Uh, that allows you to center map, zoom map, display markers on it, stuff like that. So the real implementation actually takes the map view and get provided through the activity module. So inside our view controller, we just have to inject the map manager and call the necessary methods that we need. Sounds easy? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, okay. Um, MVP pattern. So for those people who don't know what is MVP pattern, is an architecture pattern that allow you to separate your view from the details related to interaction with business logic. Um, well, yes, it's possible to use it with the scope, and let's see it by example. Uh, like in this screen, we have to react on a save button, uh, and as soon as save button clicked, we need to read the text from the email field and save it in user profile. So to give our presenter idea what kind of events the view controller expose, we have an interface that allows us to observe the save operation and to read the email text from the input field. And whenever the presenter is attached, we start observing this click, and whenever the click happens, we uh, save the email through some profile service that we have. And the most important part here is actually that this presenter can be tested. For this test, I'm using Makita framework, so I fake out view implementation. I, I emulate the click event, fake out some input, and then I verify that my uh, application service, uh, profile service was called, and it was called with proper arguments. Um, and the, the, the issue I see uh, among a lot of developers that they are very excited about model view presenter, but they actually never test their presenters. So for people who are doing that, I'm saying, you, you better not use presenters at all, because if you're not using presenters, you're not making your app better. You just overcomplicate the things without any reason. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess, it about Model View Presenter, and if somebody still have questions about it, I can answer it after the talk. Uh, so this is our uh, Android team. Uh, it's actually grow up to 15 people after four years since I started. Uh, I'm really, I'm really happy that we have it, and I, I'm proud of like all the engineers that are there. Uh, and I guess the interesting fact that as soon as we introduced this view-only framework, we were able to migrate our entire app within a single week. So, and I think this is the way that illustrate how, how good are the people who joined us. So this is it. Uh, thank you for listening. This is the link to the uh, Scoop repository, and I will be happy to answer your questions.